Hello guys, welcome to my video and it's gonna be a short one. Thank you for watching it. I'm gonna put it on YouTube if you're watching this on Facebook and you can find more videos on my YouTube. Uh, just type Benson Kalama and you'll find me there. Uh, so today what I wanna do is to uh, highlight uh, three characteristics of a cult, all right? And there is a religious cult, and there is a political cult, and and the the characteristics they are the same. You can identify them. The sad part of it, or the dangerous thing, is when these two meet together. Okay, when the religious cult and political cult, you find them in one place, in a building, in a church, in a party, in a religious movement. That is very dangerous because the the people, the members of the cult, usually they're the ones that suffer. Um, and I'm going to show you this interview by Vice News. OK, it's a, a YouTube. I, I, I don't own this uh, video, but by Vice News. And, and, and you're going to see I'm going to get out three points that I want you guys to pay attention to. And I'm gonna analyze this video, and then I'll I'll close it out. And and in between the video, I'll come in and and and, and highlight those points. Okay, so um, you you can watch this, and you'll find more uh, videos on my YouTube channel about about this evangelical faith and movement in America. That is what I'm focusing on in the age of Trump and what Trump has done and Trumpism has affected and actually has exposed a lot of fraud, a lot of hypocrisy in the evangelical movement. Thank Trump, he came in and exposed that. But I want you to really pay attention and, and disclaimer, I'm not a Democrat. I am not a Republican, uh, a Republican. I am just a citizen that is concerned about what I'm saying. And this is my opinion and only my opinion, okay? Let's go. In 2016, 80% of evangelical voters cast a ballot for Donald Trump. Despite the more lurid events of his first term, President Trump still enjoys a 72% approval rating amongst evangelicals. And dominated with the evangelicals. A lot of people were surprised. But that support is sagging, if only slightly. Rob Schenk has been one of the country's most effective and notorious political evangelicals. A fire-breathing anti-abortion activist, Schenk fought alongside infamous Alabama Judge Roy Moore, blocked access to abortion clinics, and, with an office on Capitol Hill, spent decades lobbying Republican senators and presidents. But Schenk recently shocked his former comrades by softening his strident message and excoriating them for making what he sees as a Faustian bargain with Donald Trump. So this leader... Reverend Shank is not, it is a prominent, it's been, it, it has had a voice, a big pulpit, a, vo a big voice in the Republican Party. Okay? And now he decides to have a change of heart and listen to what happened. And he's urging evangelicals to not only abandon the president, but to embrace his Catholic pro choice opponent. So the first thing it does, it goes against the leader, okay? And by, by this, the leader is Trump, President Trump, the leader of the Republican Party, President Trump, the president of the United States. So before the elections, the one we just had, this guy say, a vote for Biden. After all these things that he has said and done, you know, um, for the Republican Party. And that is the context that I wanted you to get. Partially to blame, were you part of a movement that sets, you know, way of speaking that, that became standard with Republicans? I certainly fostered the culture that we now see embracing Donald Trump and championing Donald Trump sycophantically. I used fear mongering. 
So one of the characteristics of a cult, whether religious or political, is fear. They'll bring fear, which is a very powerful motion. Motion, you know, it's they will use it so that you are afraid and trying to to go somewhere, find some sort of um, comfort or somewhere where you can get or somebody who can get rid of this fear. That's how they came in. And that is the first characteristic, fear, which he used. I preached hundreds of sermons in which I painted Democrats, whom I at times referred to as Democrats. I sat in many strategy meetings, particularly with fundraisers, who would say, give me more fear and more anger. Give me more fear, more anger. I mean, this is a pastor. And if you study this guy, and just watch on YouTube what he has said and what he has done for the evangelical movement and for the Republic, Republican Party. So they were thriving on fear and anger. And give me more of that. You know, when they do fundraising and evangelical um, movements for their cause, so for the Republican Party, or give me more fear, give me more anger. And that is the catalyst. We should have never done it. It should have never happened. That is the politicization of American evangelicalism. We should have never gotten in bed with the Republican Party. The history of politicizing religion is from bad to absolutely disastrous. And we are living through it now. In fact, I do wonder sometimes if American evangelicalism will survive us. I mean, this is something you dedicated your life to, and you are questioning right now whether that thing survives. And, you know, sorry to be so blunt about it, but what was it all for? We've got a few federal judges. We've got public rhetoric that goes something like, now you can say Merry Christmas again, and no one will scowl at you. Now, some will say, all right, so this is American evangelicalism in the age of Trump, all right? And by all accounts, it's not Trump's fault what's happening. Trump has just exposed the evangelical movement flaws and, and what is in the closet. He went out and just opened the door and all these big faith leaders now, they have to come out, you know, they have to come out and their true colors are being displayed and they're going out of the way to please the leader that is Trump. Okay. So Trump has not, is we, this is not all Trump. Trump has exposed it, and I'm glad it has happened, and it's happening now, so that now we can be able to confront this dangerous, dangerous, using faith, using religion, using Christianity, using the Bible to fulfill their political agenda. This man is an evangelical leader, then a Republican, member party you see so he's coming from that background so i just want you to uh, to have that and then in the age of trump and there is this thing you hear even in the pulpit now trump is here we can say merry christmas that's bull crap i can say christmas way before even trump came in so this fear you put a democrat in the white house and you're gonna lose freedom to even speak christian Okay, Merry Christmas. That is so wrong and that is false. They know, but you don't understand, you know, with the policies that are in place, eventually we will have fewer abortions while we have children dying in cages on the southern border. How many 14-year-olds and 9-year-olds will you trade for some newborns? That's untenable.
absolutely untenable. Was that the moment with Donald Trump you said, this is, this has gone too far? For me, it unfolded over, quite, you know, at least a few years. I had to walk away from the organization I spent 30 years building from scratch. As soon as I came out against Donald Trump, I was no longer invited to a pulpit and that was... That's not, you never, number, number three. Okay, there's fear, there's anger. Number three, you never speak against your leader. In a court, they will expel you. You, it's, you. you just can't go there. And that's what this guy did. And now invitations to go speak dries up. My main source of financial uh, recruiting financial donors for the organization. Money is used to control our voice. For money, 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 money. Money is used to control our voices. In a cult, money is a big part of it. You know, to lose somebody into something, okay? So there's fear, there's anger, um, and there is money. Uh, being used to do that and of course never speak against your leader you'll be totally totally expelled or punished i can't tell you how many major donors sat down with me and said you go against donald trump i'm withdrawing all my financial support this happened to you this happened to me but you went against donald trump i did i think my colleagues would yeah, like to say some of the things that i'm saying now about Donald Trump, but they can't risk a hundred million dollar a year budget. But they risk something else. They certainly risk their integrity, their inner peace, and very often their families, very often. And that's tragic. So there's a lot placed uh, at the altar of Donald Trump. We just heard the Republican National Convention said we don't have policies no anymore. Policies. We have no Trump's platform. It's whatever Donald Trump feels like doing today, this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow, Friday. It, it's all him. That's it. And that is true, but it's very dangerous. You know, the Republican Party had no platform before this election. It's what the president won it in 2016 when Donald Trump was running and was a Republican nominee, we actually had the platform, okay? And now it was just like, it's all Donald Trump. Exceedingly dangerous to me, that's the definition of a cult. What you have in the Republican party now is a religious cult. If you look at the Democratic party, it's, Policies are far more consistent with what I call Sermon on the Mount and Matthew 25 priorities. Because you're, you're, I mean, to be clear about this, you're very much in the minority. We're always going to be in the minority, but minorities can do very important things in a democracy. It Remember, this guy is not a Democrat. I am not a Democrat. I am not a Republican. I'm an, an independent. And I'm looking this from the outside. Um, I'm just trying to figure out, well, make sense of what has been going on. And now Trump has exposed it. And it's not a good thing for American evangelicalism. This takes a small number of evangelicals to make a very big change in this election. We need to vote what is right and good, regardless of party label. We need to do the most amount of good for the most amount of people in the most amount of ways for the most amount of time. That's why for the first time in 44 years, I will vote for a Democrat for president. All right, so that's it. Um, he did vote for Biden, okay? Biden has won the election. No argument about that, you know, the Republican Party and Trump campaign have tried to overturn the elections. They've lost in the courts several times and 
this week the Supreme Court couldn't even entertain the lawsuit Texas ridiculous lawsuit that you know I mean it's it's it, it was bad in conclusion guys make sure you are not in a cult make sure you return your independent freedom okay make sure you watch and pray make sure you are careful otherwise they'll sacrifice you at the altar of cultism whether political or whether religious a cult is a cult all right and when the the political cult and the religious cult merge together and you become a member of both your life your freedom is taken it's the most dangerous thing that I've seen and I for one I have nothing to do with it I am not gonna be a member of it all right thank you guys like the video if you do a comment and appreciate you watching bye